Hey Legends, Blake here with another video and I was thinking this afternoon about some awesome aquarium combinations. I thought I have to share them. So for today's video, I've got six awesome fish combinations to make a super fun tank that you need to try out today. Okay, so the first combination I've got is Shelly's and Rockies. Some of you might be thinking, what, what the heck are Shelly's and or Rockies? I'm talking about Tanganyika and fish, shell dwellers and rock dwellers. So rock dwellers, typically I'm talking about Julidochromis. Me personally, I've kept Dick Feldy, Transcriptus before. For, for the most part, really, really placid fish, and they're gonna hang out a little bit higher in the water column. Shell dwellers, for the most part, we're talking about Multifasciatus or Similis. Uh, I'd probably steer clear of things like Ocelatus Gold in this instance, just because they're a little bit more aggressive. But recently I put together a four foot aquarium with my Neolampralagus Multifasciatus, AKA Multis, and my Gelidochromus Transcriptus, and uh, built a little bit of a wall at the back using some limestone, and put a heap of shells at the front, and it has been an absolute joy to watch. They really leave each other alone. If anything, I've found that they've bred more now that they have their own territories to defend and sort of that little bit of competition within the tank. And it's just been a, a blast. Uh, you know, in the past I've kept them separate because I was worried about that. But from now on, I'm gonna keep them together because it's been really, really fun to watch. And it's also super natural. Not super natural, but super natural. Second combination is one that I'm sure many of us have tried. And if you haven't, you absolutely have to before you uh, are done with the hobby. And that is the classic trio of bristlenose, shrimp, and a live bearer. Uh, in my instance, I like to use probably platies, bristlenose, and cherry shrimp. But you could definitely give it a go with a caridina species like tiger shrimp. That would be really, really interesting. You could supplement in different types of bristlenose like um, peppermint bristlenose or lemon blue eye bristlenose. And with the live berries, you could definitely do endless. Uh, as I mentioned, I do platies, guppies would be fine as well. But some of the larger sword tails and that sort of thing might pick off the shrimp. So I'd probably steer clear of those. Otherwise, you can have yourself a really nice long established planted tank. The guppies are gonna do an awesome job picking off that sort of algae from the plants. The bristlenose are gonna keep the glass nice and clean. But most of all, all three species will all breed within the same tank. Uh, and it's fun to watch, like maybe the shrimp population goes up really high and then maybe the guppy or platy population goes up really high and then maybe the bristlenose uh, population goes up really high. And it's really interesting to see the waves that those sorts of things move in. So um, definitely, definitely give that, um, that combination a go. Before we move on to number three on this list, I have noticed that quite a few of you are actually unsubscribed, about 80% of viewers in fact. So if you are one of those people, it would really help me out to hit that red subscribe button. It doesn't cost a single cent and it would really help me get my stuff in front of people's eyeballs. And uh, you know, it keeps me motivated to make more and more content. So um, if you have yet to subscribe, then please do so if you are enjoying the content. If not, or if you're unsure just yet, then feel free to watch the rest of this video and decide at the end. Uh, so number three on the list, for something a little bit different, I've decided to name it the longfish combo. I thought it would be really fun to uh, combine coolie loaches, maybe some twig catfish, some really long creepy fellas, maybe some orange fin danios in the middle for that sort of sardine longfish shape as well. And then at the top, maybe you could have some uh, half beaks or, uh, or pan chacks or something like that. And it would be a really fun sort of weird tank very, very unusual, not something you see every day, but for the most part, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work. The coolie loaches and the tweed cats would get along fine. Maybe if it was half beaks and danios, you'd have to make sure that you're target feeding the half beaks because the danios could get a little bit voracious on the food. But other than that, I think it would be a combo that would work really, really well. And um, for the spaghetti enthusiasts out there, I think it would be one that would be worth giving a go. So um, yeah, let me know what you think about that comment down, down below. Number four on the list, I'm gonna call it the super size combo. And it's one that I've done before, except the bottom dweller. But uh, uh, for me personally, I keep a Saratoga because I live in Australia, but a Saratoga slash Arowana, some Oscars, and then a common pleco. If you have a tank big enough, of course, uh, and you have filtration that is gonna be able to keep up, 
I found that my Oscars and Saratoga got along absolutely fine after some initial aggression was worked out and everybody realized that the Saratoga was the boss of the tank. The common pleco would have really helped to keep my glass a lot more clean, but you know, keep in mind that they're going to produce a lot more waste than they're going to really help in, in terms of eating any algae or anything like that. But I think this combination could be really cool and it's kind of, to me, like it's just the super sized combo of like, you know, Tetris, Panchax and Bristlenose or something like that. I think it would be really fun and if you do have a massive tank, you're really not quite sure what to put in it, then at least for me, Oscars and Saratoga was a really, really fun combo that I enjoyed keeping for, for, for ages before the Oscars eventually grew out of that tank. Second last on my list, I'm gonna call it the stealth combo. These are the fish that are gonna not be so active. You might have to stand in front of the tank for a little while to find them all, but I'm gonna go with African butterfly fish, Tanapoma leaf fish, and uh, twig cats at the bottom, or you know, royal whiptails or something like that. Something that's gonna really blend in with the environment. We're talking about like stealth hunters here. So especially the butterfly fish and the Tanapomas, you're gonna wanna feed some sort of, you know, freeze dried worms or something, something that's gonna hang about in the water column for them to decide whether they're actually gonna eat it or not. You could get some really quirky tank going if you had a heap of black water leaves and, uh, and other botanicals in there. And it could be a really fun tank that you'll absolutely never see the fish in, but it would be a really nice natural looking environment. And for anybody that did have the right amount of patience, they'd be able to you know, make a real discovery when they do find out what's in the tank. And last on the fish, I think it's the Nano Combo. An absolute ripper that I've definitely done before. That is Clown Killifish as your top dweller, Celestial Pearl Danios as your mid dweller, and Pygmy Corridors as your bottom dweller. Pygmy Corridors, they don't mind to swim in the mid column either, but it's just a classic combo. Keep in mind that the Clown Killies will rock it out of the tank, just like any of the top dwellers that I've mentioned in this video. So you do have to keep tight lids if you are gonna basically keep any form of top dweller in the tank. Celestial Pearl Danny is an absolute classic. If you do go with that combo, you know, of course, I would recommend picking up my egg collector as well off Etsy. The link is down below if you wanna make breeding of those guys effortless. Although it's probably not gonna be that easy with uh, other fish in the tank, especially the pygmy quarries that might snuffle about, eat the odd egg or two, but they're gonna be adorable in the process. So um, this is a combo that I think works really well. I had a nice long bookshelf tank with these exact fish in it, and it was really fantastic. You get the sort of neon colors, flashes of color going through there, and um, you can really create a lot of depth by having such small fish in, in an area. So. Um, if you are restricted on space, maybe you live in a dormitory or a small apartment where you can't have a tank sort of bigger than, you know, 10 gallons or 40 liters or so, this is going to be a great combo for you. Throw in an auto sink list as well. If, if you want a little bit of help cleaning things up, uh, shrimp as well are going to be perfectly fine. Although shrimp will, in my experience, eat CPD eggs. Uh, but if you're not worried about breeding them, they can, of course, really, really make it an awesome tank and make everything pop. So hopefully you like this video. If you do, please let me know down in the comments below. Engagement really helps to tell me and YouTube that this is the content that you guys want to watch. So if so, please, um, you know, like, comment and all that fun stuff. And if I did forget about your favorite combo of fish, definitely type it out down below. I'd be really interested in hearing more of your quirky combos or just normal combos down in the comments below. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.